it's an amazing statement she says at the end there. She says, teach me again. How do I learn to live here on this planet? How do I learn to live here in a way that is well adapted to life on this earth? And how do I learn to live here in a way that creates conditions conducive to life? Now, it's a very simple statement, and yet it's so powerful because we suddenly realize how many things that we are doing and the way that we're living that isn't doing that. I mean, how many of you are knowing for sure that what you're doing every day in your life, what your work you're doing, and what things that you use every day in your life are creating conditions conducive to life? How many of you are concerned that they're not? So the thing is, I'm going to be telling you about my story because biomimicry has got so much depth to it that I really just wanted to introduce you to what learning biomimicry is about because an idea as powerful as this needs people to learn it and it needs people like myself who go out into the world and make the world that we, that we see to relearn. Um, this is what I was, learnt, I was taught to do. I was trained to be a chemical engineer to make process plants. Can you believe they're called plants that look like this? <laughs> this was the fertilizer factory that I worked in. Now, compare this fertilizer factory to that wonderful worm fertilizer factory that Henny told us about, okay? Here, I had to run underground at least every month for a NOx gas emission. That is one of the toxic gases. So here we have a place that's essentially creating something like fertilizer that's supposed to improve our soils, yet we're making something that pollutes the water while it's doing that, and it's emitting emissions into the, ga into the air that are causing pollution and the whole place is just completely devoid of life. And then I discover after 10 years of searching for how we can make things that don't destroy this planet, that places like this, which is where I now live and work, which is so exciting for me, make materials that have the same functions that chemical engineers make, but make it in a way that creates conditions conducive to life. So wouldn't you, if you were me, want to know how to do that? And it's a, so exciting to know that biomimicry is now a very simple and very practical methodology that enabled people like myself to learn how to do that, how to make materials. And it means that I get to do things like this. I go to the Amazon rainforest and I learn biomimicry there with Janine Benyus. And I got so inspired being there that I decided I really wanted to make biomimicry my, my whole focus of my life. And I was so lucky to be one of the first group of 16 students that have been on the first two year, total and utterly revolutionizing the way we learn. Um, this is the biomimicry course that's been going for two years. It's so radical that it can't even get accredited as a master's degree. We have biologists, engineers, business people, and design people. We're all learning together, online mostly, but a lot of on-site sessions around America. Our last one is in Costa Rica in April. We learn biology from some of the most extraordinary teachers who really understand how to teach it functionally. We learn design from Ontario College of Art and Design and how to apply that to biomimicry. We learn engineering from a student of Buckminster Fuller, and he's one of my greatest heroes. And then we're learning business right now from extraordinary people who are reinventing business, the way nature might invent business. And it's a two-year course, and I'm coming to the last half of it, and I really don't want it to end because it's just the most exciting way to learn. We meet biomimics from around the world. We go to companies that are doing it. We really get excited about it. But I would come back from my courses, and I would tell all my colleagues about it, and they get so excited. How many of you would be interested to learn biomimicry? And this was a thing. Everyone wanted to learn it, but they, they, I said, well, if we could have a course in Amazon rainforest, can't we have one here in South Africa? And I had this vision of Janine Benya sitting around a campfire in Africa and telling the story of biomimicry and sharing her wisdom, but relating it to us where we live and our, our local geniuses. And through a number of amazing coincidences, the head of the Biomimicry Institute is actually from Zimbabwe, and her parents, by pure, I don't even know how it happened. I live in a farm in the KwaZulu Natal Midlands, and her parents are in an old age home just nearby. And so she came to visit them and spoke to me, and we talk, talked about this dream of running biomimicry courses in South Africa and expanding into Africa. And of course, that came about, and Janine had never been to Africa, so I was so excited to come here. And as a result of the innovation and inspiration that came out of these extraordinary design ideas that were developed here, we're now going to head, head up a biomimicry hub in South Africa. We're going to integrate biomimicry into degrees like engineering at university level. We can integrate it into schools. So from a very young age, we can learn how to make things, how to live in ways that create conduci conditions conducive to life. So I really want to give you a taste of what learning biomimicry is about and what implications it has, just so you can all feel it. And it's just a few slides and it relates to my final point. First of all, it's about reconnecting. 
When you're on your left-hand side of your brain as engineers and, and scientists and economists, you never get taught about the bigger world. You get taught to be siloed and you get totally separated from life. You can see here, essentially, the human body is in resonance with nature. I love the shape of the DNA and the shape of the kudu horn. Everything is made of DNA and the way that life flows through nature is still flowing through us. We just have to become consciously aware of that. We need to reconnect. And then we need to remember, this is not just a tree. This is a community. <laughs> every tree is a community. And everything in nature is connected to everything else. And we are part of that community. And that is, seems like the most simple thing that you could ever imagine. But engineers like myself were never told to remember that, that everything that we touch <coughs> is connected to the rest, of the rest of the planet. And then we go deep into research. And I say research because it's not about learning about nature. It's learning from nature in a way that we can copy it. And this extraordinary realization that even in our own locality, there's the most amazing creatures that we just take for granted. Of course, we know that there's termite mines are extraordinary architectural marvels, but did you know that they are the engineering equivalents of miners that enhance the place? <laughs> they basically gather nutrients from a, from a distance and concentrate them in one place that enables plants like a tree to grow above it. And then that tree creates shade and captures more water when it rains and enables more and more life to form. And essentially, a place which is quite barren starts to become lush and rejuvenated. And one of the teams on our design challenge looked at how this could be a model for how we can uplift rural communities, how they themselves can look at the genius of their own place and find out how they can emulate that to uplift themselves. And then we realized that in nature, there's no limit of resources because nature continuously cycles everything. There's the same amount of water on Earth as there was originally, just nature continuously cleans it. There's the same amount of carbon on Earth as there was originally, just nature continuously cycles it. What we do is we create kilometers and kilometers of dung, <laughs> our own human waste that is plastics and toxic pollution, and we forget that we can actually cycle that and we can turn all of that into resources. And people are starting to emulate the human lungs, the way they take carbon out of, the, out of your bloodstream and turn it into a feedstock. They are now making bioplastics, carbon bioplastics, and cement that are based, made out of carbon. The same way that carbon is a building block in, in nature, we can turn it into a building block ourselves. And we realize that in cycling, everything that nature does is actually a reviving. And we heard about the magical earthworm, which is now my hero of the, of the month. But bacteria and fungi and algae, all the things we tend to kill to create our house and our swimming pool to be as civilized as possible, these things are doing the most incredible alchemy and I like to say that I want to become an alchemical engineer because these can turn waste, some of the toxic and heavy metal waste, into nutrients in food. They can take toxins and neutralize them. And even viruses can be eliminated by passing through two of these kingdoms. And the wetland systems are so inspiring and the people are starting to emulate those recipes to clean our water. And Maggie was given an example of that. And then we can start to rethink that all of those organisms, when they work together as a community, are able to separate and integrate all of the material world that you see in a way that actually is done at ambient temperature and pressure using life-friendly materials in a way that is self-assembled. So we are now learning to make this material, which is an abalone shell, but it's the same strength and lightweightness and hardness as metals and ceramics. Yet instead of heating and beating and treating that into being made, we're now learning how to self-assemble those using life-friendly materials in water. It means we don't have to have that large degree of energy that we need to use to make the materials that we use, and we don't have to make huge disasters like mining areas that I spend a lot of time studying the problem. And this really is, to me, the only solution. Remake, rethink the way we make materials. And so we can go then into redesign. And redesign is a very clear process that that Biomimicry Institute teaches, and anyone can learn it, and it is very, very, very practical. And then we can start to reimagine that as we redesign our world, what could the world look like? As we start to get more and more decentralized energy systems, we start to find solar panels that look like trees. And this is solar botanic that has started to make these trees that each little leaf three-dimensionally captures and orients itself towards the sun to gather energy, and every single leaf can also move in the breeze. And as it moves, that piezoelectric effect also generates energy. How many of you would like a, a solar panel like that in your house? These are, 
These are fans, these are spiraling um, motors that are able to clean water by sucking water and it's far more energy efficient than anything you've ever seen. They're starting to, to design fans and, and motors the way that nature moves energy and it's nine, up to 80% energy efficiency improvements just by recognizing nature moves in a different spiral from the ones we were designing. And then we have living buildings that you can imagine that actually generate more energy than they use and they clean the water and people can grow their own food within it. This is just a sampling. There's so much opportunity that you can imagine. But I just wanted to end by saying, and as we start to reimagine what our future could be like, we start to realize that we could actually regenerate this place that we are in. And I'm actually so excited to say that like, all, like me, all of you can learn how to regenerate the place that we're in. Because I like to say that we're part of the regeneration, <laughs> the reconnection, the reawakening. And this is my nephew, and his name is Ted. And he was deliberately called Ted after Ted.com because we wanted him to have a future that was as inspiring as it seemed to be coming out of these talks that we heard at Ted. And I think that I would think that all of us can be part of the regeneration to make sure that his generation has an opportunity to live. Thank you. <laughs>